Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in class we did num uh, something from the example packet of problems that I gave you guys, 6b. So we'll do that one here uh, for those of you that were absent. Uh, so 6b, um, I'll just cross this off because we're not going to look at that anyway. So here's 6b, um, y equals, now the parent function is going to be just cos x, and we're turning it into y equals 3 cosine half x minus pi over 4 all minus 2. Um, and so the way that we want to approach this is we want to use that general point method that we've been using in class. So the general point for the parent function is a cos a. And that's going to turn into something um, else. And from that we can figure out what the transformations are. And remember the trick here, take that ugly x term and call it a. And if I rearrange here and solve for x, I get a plus pi over 4. And then x is going to be 2 parentheses a plus pi over 4. And you can write it this way, or you could write it as, if you like to distribute, uh, pi over 2 there, 2a two plus pi over 2. Uh, I'm going to pick the second one, and I'll tell you why uh, later on in the problem. So at this point, my new x value is this one. 2a plus pi over 2 and my new y value is the whole thing it's y equals 3 cosine this is now a minus 2 so 3 cos a minus 2 all right uh, so from this we can figure out a few different things we could figure out the shifts and stretches the horizontal stretch is of, by factor 2 and that comes first in, in the way that I'm reading this. And then we move it right. So horizontal shift, right, pi over two units. And then for vertical, we've got a vertical stretch by three. And then a vertical shift down two. Um, so before I go on with the rest of this problem, there's some terms here that you guys might have learned last year. One of the things here, vertical stretch by three, you might remember that when you're talking about sines and cosines, um, the vertical stretch has a different name that gets used a lot. It's called the amplitude. So amplitude. Um, and the horizontal stretch, it doesn't, as far as I know, it doesn't have its own name for these trig functions, but it is going to be related to the period of the function. So how long before the whole thing starts to repeat. And then this thing right here, the horizontal shift, this one's a little bit weirder in my mind. Uh, this is called the phase shift. And that's the same exact thing as the horizontal shift <laughs> with one condition. So phase shift is the same thing, whoops, is same as horizontal shift if you've already done the horizontal stretch or shrink first. Right? That's an important one. So notice here, if I had done this one instead for my x value and said 2 parentheses a plus pi over 4, and then the y value is still 3 cos a minus 2, that's still, you're still going to get the right graph if you use the right transformations here. But in this one, you do a horizontal shift first of pi over 4 to the right, followed by the horizontal stretch by 2. That's still going to work. Except that if you write it this way, then the shift comes before the stretch. And if the shift comes before the stretch, then that's not technically called the phase shift. So you'd have to rearrange that so that you do the stretch first and then the shift, and then you can call it the phase shift. So um, I think it's overcomplicating stuff because it's taking terms that you already know and making new restrictions on them, but whatever, I didn't write it. So, okay. So, um, 
really, in order to graph the thing, all you need is this part and some important points from the original function. So the original function, cos a, if I just kind of do cos a right here, it looks like this, uh, starts at 1, comes down, goes back up like that. And the important points are going to be on one period here, these five points. So let's take a look at those five points. So those five points are on cosine. They're, let's see, 0, 1 and then pi over 2 comma 0 and then pi comma negative 1 and then 3 pi over 2 comma positive or 0 sorry and then 2 pi comma 1 and then I'm going to do one of one extra thing over here I'm also going to list the period equals 2 pi okay so uh, when I transform these things into my new function using this part over here, in fact, let me copy this. Copy, I'll paste it right here so we can reference it more easily. Okay, so using this blueprint right here, uh, if a is zero, then that's gonna turn into two times zero plus pi over two. So this point now is the x value is gonna be pi over two and one was the y value, so one used to be cos. So if I plug in cos a equals one, whoops, I don't know what that is, then I get three times one minus two, which is still happens to be one. Uh, then when I look at pi over two comma zero, a is pi over two. So if this is pi over two, then I get two times that plus another pi over two, so I get three pi over two comma. And then when I plug in zero for all of cos a, I get three, or three times zero minus two, so that's negative two. And then there's a shortcut for doing some of these here. If you notice, all the x values are evenly spaced apart. They're all pi over two units apart. So that means when I transform them using regular horizontal stretches and shifts, those new x values are gonna be evenly spaced also. So if you notice, to get from here to here, you have to add pi units. So this next one, I gotta add another pi units. So it's gonna be five pi over two. And then the next one's gonna be seven pi over two. And then the next one's gonna be nine pi over two. So that, that kind of helps us figure this out a little bit. Um, the negative one, let's still plug that in. So cos a is negative one. So then this becomes negative one. So it's three times negative one minus two is negative five. And then the zero right here, I've already figured out when y is zero, it turns into negative two. And when y is one, it turns into one. It's, well, actually, I guess it stays the same. The one other thing, period here, two pi, the one thing that affects the period out of these transformations up here is the horizontal stretch. And since I stretch it by two, a period's gonna, I'm just gonna multiply that by two and get four pi. And on the answer key that I gave you guys, I think I wrote because the horizontal stretch equals 4. So it's actually because the horizontal stretch equals 2. Okay, um, so then you can plot those five points that are here in red. And I'm just going to do this very quickly. So pi over 2, I'm going to go by pi over 2. So that's pi, that's 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this one's the 9 pi over 2. Uh, 1 here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Uh, so let's see, starts here, or at least the cycle that I'm graphing starts there. Uh, then 3 pi over 2, negative 2 right here, 5 pi over 2, negative 5 down here then this point, and then this point here. And so if you graph this all out and connect it with the curves, you're going to get something that looks like that. And remember, it should really keep continuing here using that same pattern. Um, and when you look at this, you'll kind of have an idea of if you messed up on your plotting your points or not because it ought to look an awful lot like the parent function and in this case we had no uh, flipping so it's just, it should still look awfully like that um, okay so hopefully that helps some um,
and uh, if it doesn't, I don't know what to tell you. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll see you in class.